Hey guys, so we're back to Imposter Factory. Let's carry on where we left off. This game is certainly a lot more different than To the Moon and Finding Paradise, the two games preceding this entry. We have just, I don't know, vacated a mansion after kind of determining it was some kind of simulation. The proof was in the fact that the owners of said mansion started duplicating. Their corpses, that is. And then we started duplicating ourselves in the time-traveling bathroom where we wash our hands. Uh, there's a bunch of glitches going on with Linry, and she seems to be in control of everything. And now we're here, in this black space, ap approaching what appears to be a ambulance. At first I thought it was a, a police car of some sort, given the color of the sirens. And a creepy white door leading, I don't know, to a hospital, I'm guessing. Let's find out. We did just emerge from a field of lavenders as well. Oh, great. Doors disappeared. Fantastic. Doesn't look like the entirety of this hospital has been rendered either. We're limited on where we can go. Let's see. Oh, even more limited. Fantastic. There's Linry. And a doctor just rudely passed through me. He could have at least said excuse me. What's going on over here? Sorry, Dad. This was all my fault, wasn't it? You should have been more careful, Linry. But no, this isn't all your fault. Do you think I'll still be able to go to more class trips? Well, we'll have to see what the doctor says. Just be patient and we'll try our best, okay? Okay. Oh, there we are. We're collecting mementos again. By exploring the memories, we're, we should be able to gather all four. So, the question now is, why are we back here during what looks like... Linry's childhood, and why are we playing as Quincy? This is the second time it happened, isn't it? Yeah, we thought it was a one-off. We really shouldn't have allowed her to go without close supervision. Didn't she just say she was on a class trip? Shouldn't she be under close supervision anyway? If there are a bunch of kids? That's concerning. Well, fortunately the fall was cushioned. These early symptoms can be dangerous. Experimental drugs for them are on the horizon. Early symptoms, huh? So, looks like she's ill with some kind of potentially uh, mental dysfunction. But in the long run. Could one of you stay here with Linry? As for the other, please come with me. Alright. Oh, great. Now the mother just stood inside me. Looks like the dad's the one that's gone on to have the conversation with the doctor. It's going to be okay, Linry. I'm surprised these guys are just talking beyond the curtain. I thought they were going to go to his office or something. I can't hear what they're saying. Is it because Linry can't hear what they're saying? Is it... Is it because she couldn't? Yeah. They're out of earshot, so... I mean, she won't remember. Oh. Got a progress bar up top. Labeled data. Interesting. And another door has materialized. Let's pass through. Funnily enough, the exit side's pointing that way. What is going on here? Have we just somehow ended up in Linry's subconscious? Out in the real world? Walking down the road, this must be her home. Heading inside. There she is. Sneaking out. Naughty child. The door is locked. This must be the bathroom? No, it's a, another bedroom. The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Cool. That's a memento. Maybe that'll come into play later on. Linry. Oh. Eavesdropping, huh? But when will it happen? Tomorrow? Years down the road? Hey, it's not certain that it'll turn malignant, right? Oh. Just the word malignant is enough to just... depress anyone. There's a chance that it'll never service. But there's a chance that it will. Then we'll treat it. If we start treatment as soon as it worsens, if it worsens, then we have another chance, right? Still, it's just... It just feels like there's so much left to mere chance. Linry? Fess up, girl. What are you doing here, Lin? I can't sleep. Oh, <laughs> Is there something wrong with me? No, absolutely not. 
But don't worry, Lin. It's nothing we can't get through together. Is that what's keeping you up? No. Oh? Th then what's the matter? The doctor said I can't go on field trips anymore, didn't he? Yeah. That's <laughs> unfortunately the least of your problems, Linry. Not for now. But they are working on something that'll help. Oh. Are you sad that you had to end the trip early today? Yeah. I didn't want to leave so soon. Everyone else got to stay the whole day. And you had a trip to the hospital. Let's go back then. Go back? When? Why not now? Because it's the middle of the night, Dad, and she should be asleep. Really? It's late, Bill. Oh, there's no harm in a little nighttime excursion now and then. Besides, I've got just the thing for it. A flashlight. Hooray! Are you coming, Mom? It's okay. I'll... I'll stay. Yeah, I don't think she can face her her child right now, unfortunately. I'll make some warm soup for when you two get back. Okay. There we are. That's all four. Now, where do we use them to do our command mayhat tricks? Although, Neil's not here to perform them. Can't see if she's got tears in her eyes or not. She's intelligently hiding them away from me by facing that way. Well, the question now becomes... I mean, what are we doing here? Is this part of the solution to solve whatever's, uh, unfortunately ailing her? Wow, is that really a telescope? Sure is. And I'll show you how it works, too. I'm gonna put it in the car, okay? Okay, I'm gonna go say bye to Mom. Where's our dear mother? We can't follow Dad outside. Yeah. Terrible news. Looks like we can move on with this tragic slideshow of events. Okay, we can't see what's going on over there. I can't tell if he's doing finger guns or what. Nonetheless, the barrier's gone. Okay, intriguing. I can already tell. We're probably going to get hit with the feels later on. <laughs> so, it's time to brace ourselves for it. It's that light again. Linry? Is that you? Talk to me! Hello? I can go this way. No, I cannot go that way. We're going this way. Run through the fields. Fireflies? What was that? Where am I? What is this? Okay, we're out in the field. It says here that it should be just a bit to the west, but... There are just so many of them. How can you track one down? Hmm. I think I found it. You did? I want to see. Wow. I can't believe it. It really does look like the pictures in the book. Hey, didn't I tell you? You name it, and I'll find it. <laughs> what if they don't have a name? All those stars? They don't all have names yet, do they? Oh, I'm sure some... A uh, bunch of people paid a bunch of money to name some stars after their girlfriends. Of course, it doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> like, a, like NFTs, basically. Yeah, I own this star. It's got my name on it. Yeah, sure. Sure you do. <laughs> I'm sure that no one else owns it whatsoever. Well... Why don't you come up here and see for yourself? You can see the name tag on each of these lighthouses. Sorry, I mean stars. Hey, Dad. Do you think there's a star up there with my name? There's already a star with your name, Linry. It's just not up there. What? You're not making sense, Dad. That's where all the stars are. Are you saying there's one underground? One beneath my feet? Oh. That's cheesy, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cheesy man. I mean, I'm your father. I'm supposed to make Dad jokes. I still like the lavender more, but... 
I'll admit, the stars are pretty cool too. Hmm. So, she was definitely a lot closer to her dad than her mother. I think her mother started to distance herself once she got hit with this uh, diagnosis. You know what's amazing about them, Lin? <laughs> you know, whenever we get a, uh, this kind of CG, that uh, we got a touching moment coming up, even though those stars all shine so brightly. Many of them have already been gone for a long time. Gone? Yeah. Yeah. Even the stars don't last forever. It just takes so long for the light to reach us. So truly, it's like we're looking back in time, in a sense. But then, why do we still see them? Well, that's because during the time they were here, they shined so brightly that their light traveled so far, it reaches us even now. Wow. I suppose I should thank them then. Without them, I wouldn't be able to see the lavender field. <laughs> I'm sure the moon contributes to it too. Well, then maybe you should thank the lavender too. Because without them, there would be nothing to see, right? Yeah. And you should thank me because... I'm the one who helped conceive you, Linry. The lavender may not be in the sky, but I like them better that way. I can play in them, smell them, and see them up close. The stars are all so far away, but I guess they got their own part to do too. I wouldn't change a thing about either of them. Wouldn't change a thing, huh? So if you could be either, which would you rather be? Hmm. Well, I still like Lavender more, so... So I... I want to be a star. Why star if you like Lavender more? Duh, Dad, so I can look at the Lavender. If I am a Lavender, I can't really look at myself. Lavenders don't look at mirrors. To make sure everyone can see the Lavender, of course. Oh, that's a pretty... neat interpretation of that question. I'd shine down on this field so bright and make it as light as day. And then, everybody could always see just how lovely it is. Damn, you're pretty damn smart for a kid, Linry. Sounds like you'd make a wonderful star, Lin. Hmm. I like that, though. Just sitting outside looking at the stars, especially in summer. Oh. It's something mesmerizing and just calming, you know? This is nice, Dad. I wish we could stay up late and come here every week. <laughs> but, Dad, can I ask you something? Yes, Lynn? Why was Mom crying? Uh, well, that's a tough question. And I don't really want to answer it right now. Let's help that ghostly man carry on with his journey. Nothing to inspect there, or there, or there. We're gonna have to carry on. Hmm. We don't have to do any puzzle solving to advance to the next scene this time around. We just literally Kamehameha the force field away and move on. Where are we? She's going to school? Oh, Teen Lenry. We don't have the progress bar at the top, though, showing us her stages in life. Looks like we're gonna quickly fast forward through them. So who are we to her? I wonder. Are we another imaginary friend? Studying. She's definitely getting older. What do we got here? Butterflies? A giraffe stands in my way. Do I need to battle you? Yeah, that's right. You better, you better shrink down. Excuse you? Come on, you. I know I'm being followed. Learning about giraffes. Just like the giraffes, the peppered moth is also used as an example of natural selection. Although the experiment has been debated, the hypothesis remains unchanged. 
that when genetic mutation occurs, natural selection decides whether it lives on or dies out. If the mutation is good, then the organism is more likely to survive and pass on its genes. And if the mutation is harmful, it is less likely to survive and reproduce, thus filtering itself out. I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean... A lot of good people end up dying out and a lot of bad people thrive. Is that natural selection too? Or just uh, the tragic way the world works? Of course, I understand he was talking about genetic diseases and such, but I mean, some of those are still around. Which is also unfortunate. You feeling okay, Linry? I'm fine. Why? Well, for one, you seemed upset. And then there's the whole leaving in the middle of class thing. I just didn't want to waste time, that's all. I was already familiar with the topics being taught. So you skipped class to... read? To read more. She's already learned about giraffes and such, or genetic mutations, I guess. And if she has limited time on this earth, I mean, I guess technically we all do. But if hers is even more limited, I can see why she wouldn't want to waste time. What even is that? Microbiology. Oh, come on. You skip Stacy's parties, but have time for freaking micro... blah blah? High school years are for making memories. Huh? You got an interesting point. Hey, where are you going? I'm going to find some books on the formation of memories. That's not what I meant! I know, but thanks anyway. <laughs> oh, an adult. Okay, we're downloading more and more. Hmm. So I wonder what all of this has to do with the first act. She's graduated. Back in the hospital, her father's getting older. Hmm. We're really blitzing through. Though, of course, according to the data up top, we still got a ways to go. Ooh, where are we? A study hall? A library, I think? A lot of faceless people. She obviously didn't bother remembering. She's up top. Excuse you. Damn, I can't walk through these people. But they can walk through me! Something on the formation of memories, I guess? There she goes. <laughs> what else have we got here in this library? Nothing, it seems. Let's continue our pursuit. Still a bit behind schedule, isn't it? Yeah, but I'll catch up. There's still a lot to analyze, but at least I have the data now. Mm-hmm. Good. I know it's a lot, but yours is the one I'm looking forward to the most. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure at all. Okay, so she's become a scientist of some kind. Studying microbiology and the formation of memories, I guess. Although I don't know if microscopes and beakers are necessary for the formation of memories. Got a uh, MRI scanner or CT scanner over here. Uh oh, all our papers have dropped. Got them. Hopefully they're not out of order. Come back here. I need answers. Where am I? Why am I stuck in your imagination? In your memories? Back to the library? It's a lot narrower now, and green even. Are we in the Matrix? That's it. I'm dropping out! <laughs> he made a decision in the library. Did she just giggle? <laughs> he was just—he just read one more page, and he was like, "Hey, you know what? Fuck it! Fuck it! I'm giving up my degree." I guess this place is no joke. But come to think of it, why do I feel as if, as if I graduated from somewhere just like this? Uh oh, what happened? Are we a test subject of some kind? Are we romantically involved? Is that us? There it is! We did drop out! Well, I mean, he did say we graduated from a place like this. What the fuck? 
that's me. Excuse me. Is this it? Is this seat free? Sorry. Oh, okay. So no, never mind. That guy dropped out, and we came in as his replacement. Seems like it. I like how I asked her, and not the guy opposite. Although it looks like there's a partition anyway. <laughs> Those smiles. Wait. If this is supposed to be the past, and my past too. How come I don't remember this at all? I mean, you don't seem to remember a lot, Quincy. I mean, this place is familiar and all, but... Hey! Why is it getting darker? Uh-oh. Oh no! They're deleting the scene! <laughs> Just the two of us left. Sleeping. Oh no! What? Is it really nighttime already? Aw, oh, man. I guess so. You dozed off too, then, huh? Yeah. Oh, I can't believe this. This is the second time this week. It's going to mess up my sleep schedule. You look a little burnt out. Yeah, well, who isn't nowadays? <laughs> Too true. Although I think hustle culture is finally starting to slow down a bit, given what happened over the past two years, so that's a plus. I'm definitely feeling a little less burned out. Actually, how did you fall asleep like that? I, uh, well, well, you see, Lenry, I'm probably like Quincy. I can sleep anywhere, okay? If I'm, and I'm always tired. That's my problem. The fact that I'm always tired allows me to sleep anywhere. On the couch, on a seat, in the plane, sitting straight up. I have looks for my friends and my wife going, How the hell did you sleep through all that turbulence? The, the truth is, I'm just sleepy all the time. <laughs> and that's my secret. To sleeping anywhere I want. Jet lag. <laughs> Jet lag? Yeah. Uh, I just came back from backpacking around the world. Just saying, I'm a well-traveled man. Wow. Lucky. Yeah. But now I gotta catch up. Wait, you mean... You literally just took a trip in the middle of a semester? Yep. Because I can. Because I'm that rich. That's what I use my student loans for. For my, uh, OE, basically. Why? Because I can. Like I said. Alright. Maybe I should go back to work while I'm still sane. Me too. I got a bunch of essays to catch up on. I could have written this on the plane, but no, I was sleeping during it. All that turbulence. Rough. What's your major? I'm majoring in li- 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 liberal arts. <laughs> oh, I see. Can you see the bottom of my nose as I look down upon you? <laughs> Liberal arts can be very useful. I didn't even say anything. That was unprovoked. <laughs> Look, I'm being sincere. Even though I, I know what you were thinking. I saw you. You were too embarrassed to say it. I don't know why you guys get so much flack around here. Psh, uh, what are you majoring in? I'm in... in new... New... Well, it's, it's a little embarrassing. It's okay. Go on. What is it? Please, blow my socks off. Neuroscience. Doctorate, technically. How the hell is that in any way embarrassing, Lenry? <laughs> Becoming a doctor of neuroscience. You bastard. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Are you... Are you trying to one-up me right now? So, what? Are you working on becoming a doctor? Yeah, you can tell this guy's definitely studying liberal arts if he has to ask that question. She literally said doctorate, Quincy! Well, no. I'm more into the research side. My paper's on the synaptic modification and encoding of memories. Ah, our third one. What's wrong? It's nothing. So, the encoding of memories, huh? Given that's what uh, Sigmund Corp is all about, implanting fake memories to uh, ease the passing away of patients that opt for the program. 
Maybe she's the CEO of Sigmin Corp or something. Okay, I can start to see a little bit of a link here. Well, it's gonna be a long night. I'm gonna go grab some coffee from across the hall. You want one too? I'm surprised they allow coffee in the library, though it is late at night. I don't know if anyone's gonna be policing that policy. Sure. Thanks. My name's Quincy, by the way. I'm Lenry. Okay. So. Maybe we helped. We knew each other? But I don't recall any of it. Looks like she's toyed with our memories, Quincy. Hmm, okay, the plot thickens. So, what does this all mean? There we are again. Back again the next day. That guy's still dropped out. He hasn't changed his mind. He didn't come back. Nothing we can do here. Let's carry on. We still have three mementos. Another night. There's our coffees. <laughs> She's happy. Don't spill any on the laptop. <laughs> Coffee during the day now. Oh, even that guy across from Linry has one too. Oh, we're even mirroring each other. <laughs> Sipping our coffees at the same time. So, the question remains though. Why are we exploring Linry's memories? Especially because we're involved with her in the past, anyway. I can't tell if she's... No, she's definitely not exploring ours, unless we're doing some kind of reverse sync, where we're also exploring hers at the same time. And it's just so happened to converge. We were definitely close. So, it's beyond me why she trapped me in that nightmare. With the murder mysteries and how she told me how she was creeped out by my behavior. Especially because she was the one who seemingly hit the reset button all the time. <laughs> Look at me copying her each time. I need to take a moment to just, um, you know, take in these memories. So, there's the cafeteria. There's us at separate tables. I've got friends. She does not. It's kind of sad. She's reading outside. Hmm. Is that a bus? Oh, goodness. Come back! <laughs> Is she okay? Is he okay? And where does the mansion fit into all this? And the owners of it? And the people that attended? The main event? I suppose we've got to catch up with what's going on first. Back in the library, our favorite place. Still quite a few people here. They're just not studying at the moment. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought we snuck ar uh, around the library and, like, started making out behind the shelves or something. And how about the Eiffel Tower? Yeah, it was quite a sight. I mean, <laughs> there are a lot of taller structures nowadays, but... There's just something about the way it stands alone on the horizon. Sounds nice, seeing all of those places up close. I wonder if it's different from the pictures. I mean, she couldn't even go on her class field trips. It's probably even worse for her to go overseas. Are you kidding? Of course it's different. It's standing be beneath the proof of civilization. Close enough to reach out and touch history. I hope your anthropology professor shares the same level of enthusiasm. <laughs> Eiffel Tower, the Pyramids of Giza, the Great Wall. Honestly, I've always wanted to go too. Then why don't you? I mean, if I'm able to save up for a trip, I'm sure you could too. Quincy, you're going for a liberal arts degree. She is studying her postgraduate doctorate in neuro in neuroscience, okay? That's probably infinitely more expensive. No, it's just I don't have the time. Don't have the time. I know you're busy, but surely you could spare a few weeks. It's not just that. I chose my path a long time ago, Quincy. I have to find a place where I'll leave a mark. 
but I don't know how long I have to get there. Because she's afraid of her condition probably popping up at any second. So, I mean, with that hanging over her head, she's like, I gotta get things done. Quick, fast, shit, study, no time. For all I know, I could be dead tomorrow. And that's... Damn, the amount of pressure on her shoulders. It's nice catching glimpses of the scenery as I go, but... If I were to stop and smell the roses... I'm afraid I'd realize how nice it all is and just... Stay. I wonder. Would that, like, make her sad? She might... I can see... Maybe... Like, I don't want to go around the world and see all this stuff because... It'll just make me feel even more upset that... I have limited time here on this planet and I'm going to die soon. I see. Maybe she's trying to study the implanting of memories so she could just cheat her way into visiting all these places by giving herself false memories of touring the countries that she wanted to go. It's quite a dramatic way to put it. But <laughs> it's also kind of romantic. Reminds me of those stars in the sky. Oh, Quincy. Jeez, you're tugging at her heart already. It's like you know. It's like her dad passed you a secret message. Huh? Like, they shine and brighten the earth below, but can't be a part of this world themselves. Y yeah Totally. Something like that. Our time here is so limited. I always feel such a pressure to make something of it. You see, that's the issue, right? A lot of the time, these days, everyone wants to make their mark. They want to be big and bright, and, you know, that's obviously very respectable and all, but... Sometimes, you gotta let yourself enjoy life as well, you know? Like, a lot of people put their work above all else. And they'll work so hard, and, you know, they'll reach greatness, they'll get a lot of money, but, you know, with that big paycheck comes a lot of responsibility at work, right? So you're going to keep working hard, and you're going to grind yourself basically to a halt by the time you're old enough, and all those prime years you could have spent, you know, taking the time to enjoy life, slow down, smell the roses, like Linry said, but you've ended up just slaving away at work or something, and, uh, not really taking a chance to enjoy life when you could. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm against that mindset, you know? Like, obviously we all need to work, but I, I don't think we should all work so hard that we neglect enjoying our time here on Earth. Like, like Quincy said, just take a few weeks off, you know? Surely you could spare a few weeks. <laughs> well, I guess that always had a different effect on me. When I think of how limited our time here is, I can't help but want to simply enjoy it while it lasts. Exactly. I guess it's kind of selfish in comparison. There's nothing wrong about simply wanting to experience the world. Sounds like something my grandma would say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean that in the nicest way, of course. It's just, she always lived life one day at a time in the purest sense. Were you and your grandma close? Sure. My parents passed away in an accident when I was young, so she brought me up. I'm sorry to hear. Well, it was a long time ago. But I remember when it first happened, people thought grandma was heartless because... Well, because she seemed to move on with her new life and routine rather fast. Maybe she was running away. But I knew it wasn't because of that. She still grieved and reminisced about them every day, missing them, but she just had this view on life. She was just grateful to be here, to take the blissful with the tragic, to be reborn every day. She always joked that even if the world ended tomorrow, she'd still be okay with it. Even if the world ended tomorrow? Well, I mean, she is grandma, she's very old, she's probably experienced all life has to offer, or at least a, a lot of it. <laughs> I envy her. I'm not sure if I'd be able to live day to day like that. I envy those people too. Fortunately, not all of us uh, <laughs> can do so. Me neither. But I guess it did rub off on me a bit through the years. 
She passed away not long before we first met, actually. Developed Alzheimer's later in life, and complications got her. Oh, Alzheimer's. God, that's... That's such a horrible disease, man. When we first met? Is that why you went on that trip? <laughs> you know, when you told me about your paper when I came back, I really questioned the path I'd chosen. I thought, there's someone whose work could make a difference. And here I am, just prancing through life for myself. Damn, I can see his point of view too. I now understand why he means it's selfish. Like, he's letting other people work hard to, you know, help humanity, help society thrive. And he's just going around the world and studying a degree for the sake of, it seems. It's not exactly an altruistic choice on my part either, to be honest. It's more like an impulse. In a way, I wish I could feel content just being carefree and having fun. But I can't. Sometimes I wonder if I'd be bitter about it in the end. Well... <laughs> sounds like maybe we could keep each other in check. Maybe we could. Hey, what do you think if... If... I mean... <laughs> I, I, I know we hang out now and then already, but... What if we do that... But... More... Like, I know this place outside campus that makes the best avocado salad. Avocado salad, huh? <laughs> Are you asking me out? Well, if you put it that way, your words, not mine. Y yeah, I guess I am. Go on, do it! I don't think that's a good idea. Of course you don't. You don't have time for the, you know, extracurricular activities. It's because I'm a liberal arts major, isn't it? <laughs> I get it. I know. I'm just kidding. But it's okay. I, I get it. No hard feelings. Let's just... I'm sick, Quincy. I have been since I was a kid. Every morning I wake up. I'm never sure if it'll take a turn for the worse. Oh, man. The nice music's gone. Now it's replaced by something on foreboding. I'm a time bomb. Oh. Oh, man. We're not going to learn more right now. Linry, are you okay? What's that? Her bag? Oh, her jumper, sorry. He just walked off and left her there. I better have gone to get coffees. Now her sleep schedule is definitely fucked. Quincy? I guess I can be quite an arse. <laughs> Wait, but if I can't remember any of this, is it still really me? Well, what do you remember, Quincy? Do you remember anything? Uh, I mean, I know you don't remember this, but do you remember anything else? Hmm. Well, time to press on. Ooh.